Uh, there we go. All righty. Sorry Good morning, about everyone. That. I'd like to call this meeting to order at 10.39 a.m. Uh, I don't see anything under com committee presentation, so let's move to proposed agenda items. I guess, Valerie, that would be you. Although technically you're not on this committee. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to handle those? Appropriate measures, Mr. Cooksey. That would be uh, Mr. Probably Mr. Cooksey, or yeah, there he is. Hey, good morning, everyone. So, on the the first item for the proposed agenda is a uh, been a standing item, uh, I believe, since March of almost a year ago. Believe it or not. And that's the extension of the uh, COVID-19 emergency measures. Um, so again, that's more things in the event of um, any type of schedule changes that need to be made or you, know, you got to do any kind of evacuations or additional cleaning. So again, it's just a standing order um, you know, that, we've, that we've had previously uh, for that one. So um, I don't know if you have any questions on, on what that looks like, I'll be glad to answer them for you. Can we just get a copy of that sent to all the board members? The exact details of that. I don't know if I still have it. It's been a, like you said, a year. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, we can we can do that. It's um, I think we presented it last month and then in previous months, but we can we'll make sure you get a copy of it to see it. Yeah, I don't print everything out. We used to get this all sent to us, but no problem. I mean, that's stuff like, for example, the fifty percent occupancy on the buses. You know the. Uh, yeah. Yeah, temp no, I think things like with that. new board members, I think we got to make sure they have it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'll make sure that that those things are everybody sees what they need to see and answer whatever questions need to be answered. So. Okay. Thanks. Yes. Yeah. Uh, as far as the automatic uh, bus wash contract award, David, can you speak to that? I can. So this is just a um, all, uh, purchase, so it's uh, two, about 244000 um, This is the uh, bus wash at CAT, which has actually been broke for, uh, according to Steve, many years, I think like six years. Uh, when it did work, um, it didn't actually clean the front of the fixed route buses or the paratransit buses. So this new system, not only will it fix the issue, it will actually clean the entirety of the fixed route buses and the paratransit buses. Uh, so obviously this will be an increased efficiency because right now they're kind of basically doing it by hand, which is grossly inefficient, doesn't it? allow them to do all the buses at the same time. So um, this actually will be covered 80% uh, by FTA grant and 20% by um, Peace Plus. So um, it's part of the um, interior renovations grant that we have. So it'll fall under that. Uh, I'll take any questions if, if there would are. That, any. Would that include the sanitizing of the buses or is this just the physical cleaning? Physical cleaning. So it's, it's literally the wash that the bus drives through to clean the outside. Uh, the um, outside, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. So right now we have that. If you're at Central and you're looking at Central and you look to the left, there's what looks like a car wash, a giant car wash. That's it, but that just doesn't work right now and hasn't for a number of years. I can't believe okay. it's been six years and this is the first we're hearing about it. <laughs> I guess it got washed away when Dr. Reese was washed away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and I, I maybe it worked for a little bit. Um, we'd have to get the full details from Steve, but at this point it's totally not working. So this will uh, give us an upgraded system, bring that work in. And uh, the addition, the, the nice thing is this system will allow us to actually wash the paratransit buses, uh, which for whatever reason, I don't fully understand the current system we have when it allow that. So it's actually an upgrade. I'm not sure if we had those bigger vehicles when that was operational, we probably were still using those MV, whatever they were for paratransit. The MV um, ones, that's correct. Yeah. yeah, they fit through any car wash. These right. new ones have only been, what, three or four years since they've been in, up and running? Yes, yes. Well, now we know we need to wash them. Because... Absolutely. 
Uh, I should say maintenance has been trying to wash them. They've just been doing it by hand. Hand washing, yeah. Yeah, that, that's that's a that doesn't lot. work. Well. Not efficient. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the next item is um, request for um, authorization to pay partial twenty fiscal year twenty nineteen uh, legal fees from Bohan uh, Falligan. Uh, so this is just regular legal fees, um, and so. Um, we're just seeking an authorization to go ahead and pay it. It's in the amount of 44,000, I think. Let me just double check for you. I believe that's 41,000, David. Uh, do we know the it's, time frame oh, yeah, on that? I'm sorry? Do we know the time frame on that billing? Uh, when you say time frame, what do you mean? From like January to March. Like we received it or... No, so it's what billing. months it covers? Oh, uh, no, we just received it as partial uh, fiscal year 2019. Um, so they don't break it down? Requested. They don't break it down? No. I, th I think we should ask for a breakdown on that. I mean, that should just be standard to me so you know what you're paying for. I, I reached out to uh, um, Ty to see about getting full, the remainder of 2019, 2020, and the current 2021. But unfortunately, he, um, I guess, has been um, uh, quarantined for COVID, so he doesn't have access to his um, billing uh, software or secretaries. Um, I can uh, try to get we we tried to get a little more detail, but um, we we haven't quite been successful yet. Um, but I could try again to get a little more. Yeah, detail. I mean, I'm, I would think that whatever he's billing, he's submitting to the firm for billing. Yeah. And I, I really think, y'all, it's very important for us to be transparent and what we are paying for legal bills. I think we need to know. Yeah, the last one included all of it. And maybe Andrew can do that because Andrew can go in the building, ties Dr. Right. Ron and allow him in there. Right. I mean, it I seems agree. to me that this is an, a crazy way of billing because Jackson Lewis still doesn't have our bills. And they told me they have a firm that does it. And they, you know, these are going back to September, October, November. And it's February and we still don't have a bill from them for services. Yeah. Uh, I, I, but That's just to be clear, this this is Bohan's bills, not. Well, no, I know it's with both. What is oh, the? I see what you're saying. Okay. How do they make money if they don't bill any clients? <laughs> is what I don't understand. I mean, Dr. if you don't Halloran. send out a bill, you don't get paid. Doctor Halloran. <laughs> yes. So, if we maybe just for clarity's sake, are you requesting itemizations from 2019 to current or? Just uh, the last bill we got was itemized from Ty, uh, but I don't remember. That's why I asked what period this covers, because the last one we paid, I know was itemized, but I think that was the first half of 19. Okay. And I believe sure this is probably the second half. I'm sure we can. No, th this is uh, the first half, uh, Dr. O. Um, we requested a little more. Um, so we actually received this 2019 bill. I'm looking when Janice got it. it looks like in August um, and reached out to Ty for um, further detail on the bill. Um, but we haven't to date gotten additional detail. So we can try to. So this is still just the uh, first uh first half i i believe first half of 2019 um so i can reach out to ty again and try to get a little more detail on the bill yeah these uh, are you know i think that's part of the requirement of our payment procedures that we know what we're paying for i agree yes sir okay um any other proposed agenda items? Anything on here anybody's opposed to? I think they all should go through to the board. Uh, let's move on to Old Business Bryn uh, Airport Express. Good morning. Um, 
As a reminder, last fall, the board discussed suspending the 100X airport shuttle so that staff could work to reimagine the route in a more efficient manner. And um, we had, the board had, had agreed to, and we had um, proposed to um, suspend the airport shuttle with our Sunday service suspension in November. But as you know, that entire suspension was canceled due to feedback received from the community. So as we are now at the time that we are doing an internal board change, um, we just wanted to touch base with this committee and the board again to um, confirm direction for that 100X shuttle. Uh, staff still recommends um, a suspension of that shuttle. And, and now is really the time to be thinking about, again, reimagining, maybe that means a smaller bus. Maybe that means it goes, mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's not a, a direct shuttle and it goes to other options um, beyond just the airport. There are a couple things that we are looking at internally, but um, currently we're paying uh, in 2020, FY20, we were um, on average paying about almost $80 per customer for this yes. route. And um, so we just wanted to get feedback from, from so, y'all. So are you telling me this was tied into the, um, the Sunday route? Yes, ma'am. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, so we, we certainly heard from the community that they did not want that discontinued. So how do we discontinue or take this to a smaller bus and discontinue the airport, but keep the Sunday service to the downtown and the hotels? We can separate it out because it was originally in a package. We um, paused the suspension for lack of a better word, but we can, now is the time for us to separate it out and say, okay, we're suspending just the airport shuttle. We did meet with um, the airport commission as well last fall and they understood and they also mm -hmm. saw that, you know, we weren't getting a lot of customers and, and, and wanted to, you know, be involved in those conversations about, um, about improving efficiency and really reimagining. Well, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but it would seem to make sense then to separate those. I mean, Dr. O'Halloran, what are your thoughts? I think I think we decided that that should go, period, and I'm fine with separating it if that's what we have to do. I think we have right. to title six if we eliminate her out. I, I think so. I mean, but I think it needs to be separated. I don't. There was an outcry um, from the tourism industry about the Sunday service, so I don't want to discontinue that. Oh, no, no, no. no um, I agree. Um, but I, but I don't want us running, especially these large buses, all the way out to the airport for nothing. If we're talking about eighty dollars per person, that's ridiculous. And unfortunately, it's it's the system is designed to be neutral, and we need to eliminate the large losing routes like the airport shuttle. I think separating and removing the shuttle and doing whatever research work we need to do. I don't see why either city of Savannah or the hotel industry can't manage to take one person every three hours out to the airport cheaper right. than we can do it. Right. Great. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is new business. So um, is there any more discussion on old business or are you ready for me to move on to new business? No, I think we can go. And then I have some thoughts <laughs> I'm going to bring up at the end. Great. So yeah, for too. new business, I just wanted to bring a couple things to your attention that we're working on in the system development department. The 5310 program is for enhanced mobility of seniors and individuals with disabilities. And we are not currently um, collecting funds for that program through the FTA. It's an FTA program and it's administered by the Department of Human Services. And it runs a little bit differently than most of our FTA programs that run directly through FTA. This one's run by the um, DHS and we would be a contractor for services. So they are the direct recipient and we would be a contractor. Um, we don't plan on at this point uh, changing our service at all but we do things already for seniors and individuals with disabilities that make us eligible for this additional funding. 
It's allocations based on annual programs of projects. So we are currently working with DHS to um, get all our contract documentations in place and uh, help them to calculate, give them enough information for them to calculate um, how much funding we're eligible for. This would be um, a program that would start in July on July 1 of 2020, which would be for the new fiscal year. And just to give you a little bit of background on what 5310 covers, eligible expenses would be um, obviously public transportation projects for seniors and individuals with disabilities, um, any projects that exceed the requirements of ADA, um, it would be about improving access to fixed route services and decreasing reliance on paratransit. So for example, our travel training program where we um, help folks to, to um, navigate the fixed route um, and not need paratransit as much, that would be uh, covered under this program. So again, we are currently working with DHS. Their um, contract paperwork is mostly due in the month of February. Um, and, and then I anticipate um, some, some um, negotiations as to how much they're willing to um, provide us. Uh, then I will bring it to the full board for a, uh, an approval of the contract and we'll sign a contract with DHS and be ready to uh, hit the ground running uh, on July 1st. And again, we don't anticipate right now any increase in um, any new, new projects, but just to um, get funding for projects we already are doing. But I do anticipate in the future, there, there's certainly room for growth in this area, which is great. Does anyone and have that, any That's a capital fund. Yes. Those, okay. Well, it's it's um, capital and operating, so it can be both. Oh, good. Which is great. Yes. There's a percentage. Yeah, maybe we uh, can. Go. Ahead. I'm sorry. Hopefully, we can reduce some of our 5307 by getting funding from another source. All right. Uh, any other questions on that for Bryn? And let's talk about Garden City. Great. So the last um, thing for me on the agenda is this Garden City Transit District. And I'm going to take a second to share my screen so you can see this map here that I have um, of Garden City. So here we are. You can see in the red, we have the uh, current parcels in Garden City that are in our transit district. As you know, part of Garden City is in the transit district and, and pay into the transit district tax and part of Garden City is not in the transit district. So um, we've been working with Garden City's staff and I will be going to um, Garden City's council meeting next Monday the 15th at 5 p.m. to present some of our phased approach to um, expanding the transit district. And a couple of things that we've we've talked about for phase one um, is to connect the existing transit districts there along Route 21 in the northeast section of Garden City. So uh, we already have a bus going along Route 21 and there's that section there and that we don't stop because it's not in the transit district. Um, there's a new school being built and um, certainly students um, wanting service there. So we're looking at um, how can we how can we make that work? And we've looked currently at pulling just commercial parcels that are right along Route 21 um, in that section between the two existing transit districts to um, expand the transit district, but um, not expand it to the entire city. We also anticipate phase one, and of course, this is a proposal that we're going to present to Garden City and then um, work with them to, to move it forward. Um, the next part of that phased approach will be that little section. I don't know if my cursor shows up on your screen. Um, but, yeah, it does. Okay, good. So right here um, on Dean Forest Road, um, you can see that we already have a route that goes across there. Um, these two sections on the north and the south um, of Dean Forest Road there are 
um, commercial and industrial. This is, these are industrial parks. They have an easy access for buses to loop around since tractor trailers are already going in there. So um, we were including that in our, in our first phase of that would be a good spot for us to um, loop around and expand, this, um, expand the transit district. After this initial phase one, we anticipate um, you know, we're really excited for Garden City. Garden City has a lot of new development coming on. They have a lot of industrial development, a lot of um, stuff going on along Louisville Road or Louisville Road. So um, we're excited to see their, their expansion and their growth. And so phase two would be a future phase where we would look at expanding service into those industrial areas um, along Dean Forest Road and along Louisville Road to um, help get residents to and from their jobs there in those locations. Uh, at this point, we are excited. Uh, Garden City has requested and we had no problem um, proposing no transit district expansion into residential, onto residential parcels. Um, it makes sense to start this phased approach with commercial and then go into the industrial park. So again, I'm gonna present this to Garden City's City Council on Monday the 15th at 5 p.m. Um, and we'll go from there, but I just wanted to bring you all into the loop as to where we are in the process and, and I'm excited. I think, um, I think we've come up with some good, um, good steps with the city of uh, Garden City um, as to how to move forward uh, there in their municipality. Are these two areas both served by the same bus, both the they industrial? Are. So essentially we're talking about just adding stops. The currently the phase one will yes, just be adding stops. Phase two, we'll have to re, really do a little bit of research and figure out, is it appropriate to just add stops, maybe add some loops in, or is there enough business there to um, have a whole new route? And that's something that we started talking about with Garden City. Uh, I really think that um, our pilot program approach to stops will probably help this out a lot because we'll, we'll get to start with something and then determine, are there enough riders? Does it make sense? Where are people needing to get to and from? And how do we you know, make that most efficient? So I think that that industrial phase two approach will be a bigger conversation but phase one is pretty straightforward that we're already going there. Um, we just need to add some stops in. Yeah, I know. I talked with uh, the mayor probably a year and a half to two years ago when they were concerned with the new school that after school activities, their buses stop around 3.30. So the kids have no way to get from the new high school to wherever. Plus the fact that we do use the facility there for our bus training driver training because that's also over there. Um, and I don't think adding, I don't know how many stops we'd be looking at, maybe six or something, would add a lot of time to the route because you always have to worry about extending these routes to where I know to go from my house down in Georgetown to Cat Central was an hour and 37 minutes and no one wants to get on a bus that takes that long to get anywhere. <laughs> and it put me there either 45 minutes early or 20 minutes late for board meeting. <laughs> Plus I had to walk a half a mile to get to the bus stop on Georgetown Boulevard or King George Boulevard. So yeah, I know they're very interested in that high school and having some availability they were even talking about putting an overhead walkway so the kids could go to the other side without having to cross 21 because they're afraid of traffic problems. But I think that's a great plan. And as little tax increase as we can give them, they're very happy about. Because <laughs> I think the residential around that area is almost no revenue. So what, what we are going to get is going to be from those uh, commercial businesses along the route. And yeah, we should, because uh, if they're going to have to add to the tax base, they're going to have to do that through ballots and they're going to have to get that set up in time and new taxes go out in June or July, I think in Garden City. So I don't know if they have time for this year, but 
we'll see how far they get. If they're planning on going ahead, we might be able to work some things out with putting in stops as a test at some point and seeing how it affects the route before we make it permanent to show some good faith for uh, the people of Garden City. All right, thank you for that, Bryn. I'm gonna do the, um, any other questions? I'm sorry, I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> and we have- I, to... have a, I have a quick ahead, question, Ellen. Dr. Halloran. This is just for future. Um, we've talked a lot about this first mile, last mile, and I would really like to do a little bit of research on that or have us do some research to see if, you know, we can really analyze these routes for the core locations uh, for CAT and then like areas like Isle of Hope, which is part of my district. Um, do we really need to be running these large buses out in these areas? And do we look at some type of a shuttle service to get them to a main line? I, I just, I think that now was the time to really be looking at this kind of stuff. And, and a lot of that was uh, gone through with the Let's Go program. And I think once we get fully stabilized, we I understand, but need can to we pick really up... look at that. I mean, I agree with. Yeah, I think that it's. On a dollar, uh, 120 to an hour. But yeah, there has to be some. Um, for one, if it's a smaller bus, we don't have to have a CDL driver. The pay pay rates are different depending on the people driving the vehicles. Um, I just would yeah, like we, us need, to, we need to handle that. I, I think we do. I think we need to show this community that we are thinking about how their tax dollars are being spent. And the, the repeatedly, the biggest concern I ever hear of these large empty buses. I hear that more than anything else. So yeah. I really, that would be something I would like, and I'll be happy to assist in any way that I can, but that's something that really concerns me. Dr. Halloran, that lines up with, with your request from the chiefs about uh, projections for long-term planning. I think and cost think savings. Can... Yes, and cost yes. savings. Yes, Boston's so that would be part of our long-term planning. Okay. And that's, that's what I'm going to go into next. Uh, the two meeting dates are the 16th for governance, the 23rd for the regular board meeting. Uh, this committee has had some different objectives over the last year and a half uh, when we had our seminars and did all our proposals with Doug Eady. Um, made, uh, what I'm looking for basically for the, the section chiefs to come up with are a short-term plans for increasing efficiency and decreasing costs and then long-term plans as in like one something in the next three years and then over 10 and beyond so three separate areas current short or short-term medium-term long-term um, the biggest thing we need to do, and I talked to Valerie about some of this is at some point we have to get our dependents on paying our bills with the 55307 funds. Those are capital funds. They are funds that we need to use to fix the buildings, pave the parking lot outside of Cat Central. We have to find a way to reduce that three and a half million dollar uh, fund that we're taking away and losing matching funds on. So we're losing about four and a half million dollars a year that we could use much more efficiently for things that we need. Uh, I had conversations about moving power transit out of Cat Central, finding a separate location for all of power transit. We don't have room to add 33 new vehicles to the parking lot. We're gonna to have to add 33 new drivers. There's no parking there for the new drivers. 
if we found a separate location with a small building to move the entire department there and park all the vehicles there, we could save uh, some revenue over the course of time because we have to get our drivers to the building to get the buses. And as we expand and we're talking about expanding into other areas, we're gonna need more large buses. And every time we add a bus, we lose parking. And every time we add a bus, we add the need for parking across the street. So we have to start looking at possible grant funding for that or using the grant funds we already have, possibly leasing the space to move paratransit to. I think we need to, with the move towards electric vehicles to start considering solarizing Cat Central. We have an entire roof up there that's basically sitting there doing nothing or even a structure on top of the parking area, some way to, to generate that. If we're gonna go into electrical, we already have six buses and we can you know, cut our cost on the electric. Uh, the mobile ticketing help cut back. I think the other thing we have to look forward to and hopefully we can get this going at some point is going fare free countywide. Uh, the revenues are about $3 million a year from fares really is not, a, you know, it's 10% of our budget, but we have to start looking at cost saving measures because, you know, it's just, we went over budget by $16 million over the last eight years. And that was all covered by our capital expense money. So, and unfortunately when you use it for operations, you don't get matching funds. So those are the things we have to find a way to cut back on how we're expensing. Um, you know, it, we cut back when we did the budget last year, but unfortunately only 30% of our expenses are uh, variable. 70% is payroll and wages and benefits. Those are really not adjustable. And especially if we're expanding, they're only gonna go up. And we can, I mean, I don't know how much we can cut out of that other 30% without crippling the organization. So this is the time to come up with some creative ideas, no matter how silly they may sound, send them to the committee. We can all look at them. We can come up with a new 10 year plan and extend beyond that. Uh, FTA wants to see that. They wanna see that we're making progress to make the agency better, more efficient, less expensive. And I think there's enough technology and ideas out there where we can make a dent in our, rep, our expenses. So everybody put their thinking caps on, come up with some ideas. Like I said, I don't care if it's the silliest thing in the world, send it. We wanna look at it. We may say, oh yeah, that's a really good idea. Mobile ticketing was that. We, we talked about that for three years. You know, but we spent all that money and then a week later we're talking about fair free. So why do we need mobile ticketing? <laughs> you know, fixing one problem and then saying, well, why don't we go fair free? Well, we just spent $3 million to fix that. So let's not spend that 3 million if we're gonna go to fair free. And that's something we have to negotiate and talk to the county about. I know Helen's shaking her head. <laughs> There's some ideas out there, but if we can show the county that we can cut back other places then they're going to be happy too because the millage is always a challenge <laughs> and that's all i'm going to say for now i think uh everybody has a general idea the budget for next year is probably going to have to be put out without a whole lot of new innovations in it uh, i'd love to put a big space holder in for innovative projects that'll save us money but i don't know if we can get there yet we're we're already in February, April, the budget has to be presented to the, commission, the board of commissioners and has to go through public uh, meetings. And then it's finalized in May. So we have a very short window to get this done. Uh, any questions from anybody here? We got a big crowd, so ask away. Helen, you wanna add anything? I saw you shaking your head. I know your finances is part of your Biggest no. concern, just like mine. 
It is, um, but I think that what I'd like to do is is really to have a game plan going forward that in the long run will be cost effective and that we are looking at, just like you said, no matter how silly it seems, options uh, because transit is constantly changing, constantly changing. And the needs of people are constantly changing. So we've got to stay on that curve. And we don't know what kind of changes are gonna come in from the federal government when the whole new uh, group in both transportation and in the White House, you know, it's always been a given that they're gonna fund mass transit, but <laughs> that's only as good as yesterday's word. <laughs> It might be a good idea in the next few months, couple of months or so, to get um, maybe the lay of the land from Jack Kingston, what he's, what he's hearing in D.C. as our lobbyist. Yeah, um, he usually comes in and does a presentation. I don't remember the timing in that. I know uh, Mike Vacker will do one but, after this legislative session. that would be a session. good idea. Yeah, we should always bring him in at think, least once a year for, Jack, what's going on? What, what can we expect? He might know by mid-year, at least before we start our next fiscal year. Exactly. So we can extend an invitation to Jack to come in and we'll set it up for a presentation at some point in the next couple of months. I think that's a great idea. I know he doesn't mind doing it. <laughs> Jack's the people guy. He's, he's out there to talk to people. Mm -hmm. We can do That's that. Right. We'll, we'll extend that invitation to his firm. Yeah, I mean, I know he's home periodically and in DC periodically, but I think he likes talking to the people he's working for. Right. All right. Any other questions, ideas, concerns? All right, if everybody's good, I'm gonna adjourn the meeting at 11.16. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank and email those Thank things you. out as soon as you have them. Thank you.